Merkel Media. This was all circulating around the base that a giant had been killed, but no one was supposed to talk about it. I saw three long bony fingers reach up underneath the door, curl up to grab it, and then disappear. When he came over to me, dude, he slithered over to me. And this giant comes out of the cave and they're all frozen. And he starts running and firing at this giant. Well, the giant moves. He's got a spear in one hand and he's running really fast and spears Dan and holds him up like this. Somebody yells, shoot him in the face, shoot him in the face. They basically decapitate him. Got closer, got closer, got closer. When he got about 15 yards away from me, I raised that 12 gauge and I blow his head off. I feel something pulling at my leg. And I look over and there are two small gray entities pulling at me. And they're literally, I'm getting pulled off the bed. I reached my hand into this bush and I touch air. Couldn't breathe and I couldn't move because I know I'm seeing a monster. Welcome to the show, everybody. You're listening to The Confessionals. I'm your host, Tony Merkel. Thanks for being here. If you have a crazy, wild experience you want to share with me on the show, go ahead and shoot me an email. My email address is theconfessionals at theconfessionalspodcast.com. That's theconfessionals at theconfessionalspodcast.com. Or go to the website, theconfessionalspodcast.com. Hit the contact section and you can reach me that way as well. Either way works for me. Just get a hold of me. If you want more shows on a weekly basis, on Thursdays, we drop member-only shows on the website and the Castos app. Plus, with that membership, you'll get access to ad-free listening of the Tuesday shows and the overtime segments when they are available. If that interests you, hit the confessional podcast.com go to the join button and become a member today friends we have a lot of crazy things going on in the world today one thing that doesn't have to be crazy is your pantry if you want to make sure you and your family are good to go when the emergencies hit go to prepare with the that's prepare with the get yourself emergency supplies emergency food that will last you up to 25 years on the shelf but right now, friends, I think it's the best time to prepare before the emergency happens. Better to be five years early than two minutes late. Now, before we get into this week's show, I want to talk to you about the first annual Dogman Cryptid Conference in Paris, Tennessee on August 13th. I will be a speaker there alongside of many other more qualified speakers. This is an event that is being hosted by Paranormal Roundtable and Josh Turner. The host of this whole conference will be Ken Gearhart, and the speakers will be obviously Josh Turner, Steve Stockton, Ron Murphy, Nick Redfern. Obviously, I'll be there. Jody Cook will be there speaking. A lot of of great people speaking at this event hanging out and if you want to come and join us just hit the link in the description below and you can get your tickets to the first annual dogman cryptid conference in paris tennessee on august 13th also friends it's not too late if you want to join me on the exclusive the spirits are in tour on july 1st through the 2nd that is where myself and a group of listeners are going to take a bus trip up to the shanley hotel in new york state to stay one night at the haunted, very haunted Shanley Hotel, where they make you sign waivers before you stay there to make sure you don't sue them because you got too scared. Now, this is an event I'm very excited about doing. And if you want to join me, there are a few seats left. All you got to do is email travelgrouptours at AOL.com or call 973-513-9001 and ask for Creed or Jen. They are the ones running the operation over at Educated Wanderer. And that is the company that we are using to host this event. If you guys want to get in on this action, get in on it now because the date is coming up soon and we only have a few seats left. 
That's again, July 1st through the 2nd. The Spirits are in tour. And if you want to get a hold of Creed or Jen, call them 973-513-9001 or email them at travelgrouptours at AOL.com. Now, let's get to this week's show. We have Ryan coming on the show today. And he talks about paranormal experiences he's had throughout his life. But he really talks a lot about being abducted and being implanted. I think it spawned a great conversation. I know you guys are going to enjoy this. So let's get to Ryan right now. All right, today we got Ryan. Ryan, how's it going, buddy? Yeah, good, thank you. Tony, how are you? Ah, doing good, man, doing good. So uh, you're in the UK, and there's yes. a time difference. I appreciate you working with me on the time and everything and getting this thing going because uh, I actually, man, I'm really excited to talk to you about your experiences. Whenever I, and again, this might sound odd for you to hear or the person I'm talking to, but whenever I get an email that's around, I've been abducted, I'm like, <laughs> mm, I'm interested. I want to hear it, you know? So like the, the selfish side of me, there's like a uh, entertainment side, you know, that I want to hear. Obviously the audience tunes in for entertainment as well to hear these stories. But uh, as the host, sometimes I feel weird. I'm just like, oh, I can't wait to hear how you were abducted. And you know, maybe, maybe it's not that kind of enthusiastic for you, but either way, I am glad you were going to be uh, talking about this and stuff. But uh, when you were a kid, things kind of kicked off. And now you, in the email, you mentioned about how things kind of tie together. At least you view it that way where you think everything kind of ties together. So let's just start off in the beginning from your childhood and these experiences you had. And uh, we'll go from there and just show us how this whole thing un- unfolded for you. Because I know we go all over the place with you know some things that almost look haunting on the surface to the abductions, to implants, all that stuff. So take it away, my friend. Brilliant. Thank you, Tony. So yeah, I am... Um... Going back to being a, a young child, I have a lot of memories of being taunted by uh, an invisible entity. And, and I, I don't actually have any memory of this, but my parents tell me that I had an invisible friend for a good number of years while I was young, and I used to sort of hoard food for him. And yeah, I used to call him man, apparently. Um, again, I, I don't really have a lot of memories surrounding my invisible friend, but I do remember some certain situations um uh i can remember waking up early one morning and seeing a silhouette of a man at my bedroom window now there was nothing outside of the bedroom window where anyone could be stood they would need a ladder to access that window and i remember a very clear silhouette of a man sort of just or a presence at that window and um uh, uh, yeah, again, a lot of these memories are quite vague, going back to being a very young child, but I'm just sort of giving you an outline of some of the kind of things that I experienced. I mean, I can remember um, I had a 50 pence piece once that, you know, a, a, one of my parents gave me this 50 pence piece, and I was dead happy to have this 50p. I was going to spend it in the shop on some sweets later, no doubt. And I was playing with it, and it, it rolled just slightly under the, under the, um, the washing machine there. And I was begging my dad to get it. And, and it, obviously, he was a bit reluctant to pull the washing machine out to get this 50 people. But it, but in the end, I managed to persuade him. And I know he definitely went under there, only just. And as he pulled it out, it wasn't there. So, of course, he's angry with me and I'm messing him about. You know, just a little. But I, I can remember another occasion where I had a, a glow in the dark toy. It came with an action man. And. Um, it was like a gun, and, it, and it, it was a, it glowed in the dark. You had to hold it up to the light bulb, I'd turn the lights up, and I'd get in bed, and I'd sit there and just watch it glowing. You know, I was easily pleased at that age, and I accidentally dropped it down the side of the bed, and I went to grab it, and it completely disappeared. And I, I, I remember thinking, oh, that's a little bit odd. And um, and then with that, I was sort of forcefully pinned to the bed, and I was at this point, I was petrified, and I. <clears throat> I remember screaming as loud as I could, but nothing had actually vocalised. So "Ah!" I was shouting for mum, but "Ah!" and I I can't actually remember exactly how that episode concluded. Um, I'm I I honestly can't remember. I don't, but I remember those circumstances: the the toy disappearing and and being petrified, 
what it's being physically apprehended and trying to scream and, and couldn't scream. It was just quite, a, quite a scary ordeal for a young three-year-old, I'm guessing I was at the time. Um, so, yeah, as a young child, um, there was definitely something in the home. There was a, a lot of, a lot of inc- uh, incidents that happened over the years. Uh, a bit later on, we moved house and I remember an, uh, an occasion that um, we had uh, my auntie over from across the road. She lived opposite us at the time. And we were all sat in the in the front room and she'd, she'd got a, a young newborn baby at the time. Uh, my f- family members were sat on the settee facing us. We were sat in front of the fireplace. I was sat next to my auntie. She had a, a baby in her arms. And it was a really big um, painting. It wasn't a, a painting. It was a print of some horses running through a field. And this painting just decided to fly off the wall. It didn't drop. If it dropped, it would have hit the fireplace and fell forward. It didn't. It came out from the wall, landed just behind us, and then upon further investigation, and we noticed that the screw was still in the wall and the string was still intact on the back of the on the picture. So that was a, a little bit odd. Um, so, yeah, a lot of little sort of experiences nothing uh nothing majorly conclusive just odd things that you just can't explain um i remember there was another occasion i was a little bit older at this point i was i was in my teens probably about 15 16 and then and i'd gone to see a, a girl and she lived a good few miles away from me and I remember staying there quite late and, and riding home quite late. I got, and I was on a push bike. I've got no lights on my bike. And I was riding down a, a country lane. And this, this country lane was called, um, uh, it's, it's, it's got trees on either side. So it's very shadowed. It's called uh, Shady Lane. It's called Shady Lane. And I remember it being absolutely pitch black. I couldn't see a thing. There were no cars, no traffic, no one around. And I was, I could just make out the white lines in the middle of the road. Um, so I was riding on the white lines, so I knew that I wasn't going to ride into anything. Um, just minding my business, happy as Larry, and then all of a sudden something grabbed my leg out of the darkness, and um, I, I couldn't tell you what it was. There was nobody about, and, and, and yeah, like I said, something grabbed my leg, so I bolted <laughs> as fast as I could to get out of there. And... Uh, yeah, just just a lot of so with, with that with the, with that experience and stuff. I mean, you didn't see anything. It just you felt nope. something grab your leg as what you were you were pedaling, and yeah, uh, yeah. It, it was. It, it seems like it was just not. It wasn't enough to knock you over or anything. Just enough to like, nope. maybe, like grab your leg real quick. Did it let go or did you get away? Yeah, it was almost. No, I got away. It, it wasn't. It was almost like I'm letting you know. You know, I want. I'm, oh, I'm, I'm trying to just put a bit of fear into your head, kind of. You know, it wasn't a, a, an aggressive, like, attack. Um, although I have actually been attacked by an invisible entity, but I'll come to that because this is that was a little bit later in life. But I'll just come on to my um, my UFO experiences now. Again, I've, I've not got anything concrete. I've not got hard evidence. I've just got very unusual, very unusual, unexplainable circumstances. Um. The the most memorable again I was I would have been I'd have been about seventeen I don't think I was quite of a legal age to drink um, but we did we we sort of went on town and you know we we had we'd have twenty quid in our back pockets and um, you know it, it was it was a lot cheaper back then and at the end of the night it was kind of like do we get a cab home or or get a kebab. It's a choice, you know. It, we it, we don't, didn't have the luxury to have both back then, so the kebab won, and <laughs> we walked home. And the walk home was very sobering. And uh, I remember a friend lived around the corner from me at the time, and uh, we walked home. And uh, I remember clearly because I'd sobered up significantly by the time I got home. I remember significant. I remember clearly 
uh, getting arriving at home, it was daylight, and I remember walking through the front garden, and I don't remember anything at all after that. Um, when I woke up in the morning, felt okay, wasn't hungover particularly, and I went downstairs, and, uh, and my mum said, I'm very ashamed in you. I was like, why? Why? What have I done? She goes, last night, your behaviour. I goes, what do you mean? I didn't do anything wrong. She goes, well, I woke up, I had a feeling that something wasn't quite right. It was about four in the morning. She said, I just sent something wasn't right. And I, I went in your room to check on you, and you wasn't there. You wasn't in bed. And I panicked a little bit, and I looked out the back window, out your bedroom window, and there you was, stood completely naked in the garden in some kind of trance. I was like, what? You've got to be kidding me. She said, yeah. And I went out and I went to, grab to, to get your attention and told you to come in, tell you to come in. And, and you, weren't, you weren't with it. You weren't fully compass mentors. He said, oh, I really need to go to the toilet, ran upstairs and just climbed in bed. Uh, and uh, she, she thought, well, where's his clothes? You know, completely naked, nothing on me. Where's his clothes? So she's gone out uh, looking for my clothes, and my clothes were in a neat pile, folded meticulously. I mean, I'm 17 years of age. I'd take my clothes off and just chuck them on the floor in the bedroom. I wasn't, I wasn't into folding clothes. No, I don't think I'd ever folded clothes. But there, my clothes were meticulously folded, perfectly in a pile, with my watch that I'd just bought with my first paper packet uh, laid out on top. Uh, it was quite an expensive watch that I bought myself at the time. And luckily it hadn't been stolen. But yeah, all there in the pile, exactly where I remember I had my last known memory as I walked into the garden. So again, I can't say, oh, I've seen aliens and I've been in a craft. No, 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 it's not quite like that. It's just I've been given a set of circumstances that really made me question the possibilities of what could have happened. And I've got to admit, I did think at the time, we did, you know, we kind of joked, yeah, I was abducted by aliens. We didn't, I didn't take it seriously. I didn't think that's exactly what happened. To be honest, I didn't even say anything to my friends or anything at the time. It was, uh, it was just one, another one of those unexplainable circumstances. And going back, a few years prior to that experience, I remember I was with my cousin at the time. He was taking me uh, swimming. Um, we were stood at a bus stop. It must have been winter time because I remember it was dark. I remember being stood at the bus stop with him. And all of a sudden, I had this compulsion to look into the sky. No reason to do that. wasn't something I generally did. And as I looked up into the sky, I immediately was drawn to this, what I thought was a star that was just slowly moving across the sky. I went, oh, that's, that's odd. It looks like a star. It's moving. And then as I locked onto it and had that thought, it stopped. I thought, oh, that was moving. I'm sure that was moving. And then without accelerating or, or picking up speed, it just suddenly shut off at a 90-degree angle in a, on a tangent and I, I saw it sort of shoot across the sky. I watched it disappear behind some clouds and then reappear. And it gone. I thought, oh, what was that? That's not really explainable by anything I can, you know, I've ever seen before in the night sky. It was a, an unusual experience. At the time, I wasn't scared. I wasn't, you know, I wasn't uh, rattled by it. I didn't even say anything to my cousin that I was with at the time. I just thought, oh, you know, it's just one of those, another one of those odd things that I can't really explain. But these, these experiences, I think were, I mean, with, with the thing with alien abductions, people say to me, okay, what's so special about you? Why, why would they have an interest in you? And uh, there is nothing special about me. I think this is a phenomenon that's happening to millions of people, but they just have absolutely no idea it's occurring because they can cover their tracks so well. You know, if they erase your memory of the experience, 
how are you ever going to know? Um, there's definitely something going on because there's too many people out there having these experiences. Some, some of them do have full recollection of being in crafts. Um, my, my niece, actually, uh, going, going back a few years now, uh, um, I woke up one morning and felt a bit off. You know, sometimes you just you think mm, something might have happened last night. You don't know. I can't say for sure something did, but I, I woke up one morning feeling a little bit off. Something wasn't quite right. I can't be sure something happened, but I, I had it in the back of my mind. And then my young niece, uh, who would have been maybe four or five at the time, said to her mum that uh, she went up in a lift last night, up into the sky, and Uncle Ryan was there in the lift with me, meaning me. And again, it was just like, oh, that's uh, an unusual claim. Um, you know, I felt like something might have occurred. And anyway, no, no recollection, no memory, no nothing. But it just again, just one of those oddities. And, um, you know, sort of years later, as sort of, um, it was just before YouTube became a thing, um, there was people to people file sharing. I remember that's how I first started exploring and researching the, the sort of paranormal phenomenon. And um, because of my prior experiences, I had a keen interest in, in this topic. And I thought, wow, this is the first opportunity. I'm not a reader, I don't read books. Um, it's the first opportunity I've got to, to do a bit of research into this topic. And uh, so I, I, that was something that I did. And um, I started uh, looking into other people's accounts and, you know, downloading video footage, this, that, and the other. And I even got into the Billy Meyer, um, the Billy Meyer case, which I'm, I'm not saying, I'm not, I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm not s s saying that what Billy Meyer is presenting is false. I don't believe that. I believe it's true. However, I don't want to think that the guys that he's interacting with are necessarily the good guys. Um, and I'm not saying that they're doing anything particularly wrong. It's just that with what I've kind of the conclusions that I've drawn through my experience and everything that's going on, the good guys are more obs are more observing what we're going through rather than interfering. They know this what we're faced with down here on earth is is ours to deal with, and they won't interfere. They've got a very much of a hands off approach. That's that's what I believe. Um, so I think anyone that's coming forward with claims of alien contact and, and this, that, and the other. I tend to keep, I, I, at one point I was into it all. I, I loved it. You know, I, was, I couldn't get enough of it. But now I tend to keep that information at sort of arm's length because I think it could be misleading in some ways. Um, and the, 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 the only reason I'd drawn these conclusions was I actually... Uh, we went. I went to Amsterdam with a group of friends, uh, with the with the sole intention of uh, doing some magic mushrooms because because they're legal over there. And I, I wanted to make a bit of a sort of ritual out of it, and you know, have a spiritual experience, this, that, and the other. And it it, it kind of ended up just being carnage and a, and a brilliant laugh, to be fair, <laughs> for the most part. But. Um, I did, you know, it did sort of start with the lads, like, right, we're going to be in the bedroom, I want us all to be quiet, we're going to just see what happens, and I want to, you know, we bought incense and a, and a calming CD. You know, we had the intentions, we wanted to do it, to do it right. And um, I just had this overwhelming feeling, because I'd been yearning for the stars, I'd been looking at Billy Meyer, the Billy Meyer case, been looking at all these, you know, alien civilizations and yearning. I, I was really resenting my existence here on Earth because it was, uh, this place is a difficult place to survive. Um, and I was yearning for the stars and what could 
they can offer and how these civilizations live and advanced civilizations, blah, blah, blah. And during my mushroom, as we were, as it first started uh, to kick in, I just had this connection with the earth, like I'd never connected with the earth before. Um, I just got a sense that it was a living being and I, I could see it as an entity, you know, as it, as it revolves in space. Um, it's a living, breathing entity. And, and as you zoom in, you've got all the individuals on the planet that are animating the planet into consciousness. It's, it's us that, that make the planet what it is and, and brings it into life. And I just had this overwhelming connection and I thought, and I realised that she was providing everything that we need right here, right under our feet. And from that point forward, so I stopped looking out to the stars and stopped looking at these alien civilizations for inspiration. And I started to concentrate more on my journey here on Earth and, and what we're going through here because I personally believe what we're doing here on Earth is of paramount significance. It's... There's no other place like this in the universe. Again, this is all speculation and belief, but I'm going with what resonates with me um, and, um, you know, sort of putting the puzzle pieces together and all the research that I've done. Um, I think being here at this time is a unique experience in the universe. Um, there is a set of circumstances here and the, the, the kind of challenges that we're faced with that don't exist elsewhere in the universe. You might go to another to another planet somewhere else in the cosmos and you might find a symbiotic environment where everything works in harmony with one another. Well, that's kind of very different here. We Down here on Earth, we've got an environment where everything's feeding off each other in order to survive. It doesn't matter what ecosystem you, you look into, something is eating something else in order to survive. And even even the vegetarians of the world, you know, plants are living sentient beings as well as animals, um, which a lot of people probably don't want to hear. Um, so I'm, 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 I'm kind of losing myself a little bit here. I'm getting, getting quite ahead of myself. I've kind of gone off from being from experiences now to giving you my opinions of, of you know, a galactic kind of view of world view. Yeah, no, that's fine, man. That's fine. I mean, we, we can get back into the experiences and stuff. I, I just wanted to do say I do want to say to you, though, I, I think that you're right. Like, I mean, I, I don't know the depths of the, the, the philosophy that you're you're going down, but I do have this sense. And I think a lot of people listening have this sense that we are there is something very unique going on here mm-hmm. whether whether it's unique to the universe or unique to our existence up to this timeline if you're breathing air right now you're living in a time that's very very unique and also pivotal absolutely very pivotal absolutely. in our humanity and in our existence and uh absolutely you can you can go down so many different roads depending on what you believe, you know, and 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 how why is it unique and where is it all going? But I do feel like in our guts, at least for me, and obviously for you, uh, it, it just feels like this isn't this isn't just you know the Roaring Twenties, you know, like back in nineteen twenties, but now it's twenty twenty. Uh, this is something totally different. You know, and, and and it's hard to put your finger on it. You can go down the road of the conspiracies and and the these these world elites pushing us into this new existence of humanity, which is very possible. Uh, oh. But then there's also the 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 uh, the agenda. I don't know if it's the agenda. No, I would say the angle of you know extraterrestrial, um, interdimensional beings. Uh, and and humanity coming to this understanding that we aren't alone, whether it's in the universe or interdimensionally, you know. Mm-hmm. I think we're Absolutely. coming, we're just coming to this this idea and this understanding that, um, you know, for a long time it was, 
you know, there's there's the atheist crowd, then there's the theist crowd. The theist crowd believes there's a God, there's a hell, and, and, and very, very, uh, and I don't mean this insulting, but very simplistic in the sense that there's there's a limited amount of characters in this story. You know, there's us, there's God, there's Satan, there's demons, angels, boom, done. Uh, and and I, I feel like humans are starting to come to the understanding, whether you're you're scientific minded or more spiritual minded, that that there is way more to this existence than what we ever fathomed, you know, yes, and, yes. And, and the fathoming of the more to this existence was, was uh, contained to sci-fi movies. And all of a sudden we feel like we're living in a movie. It's because the movies that were made for decades now that were sci-fi is turning out to be real. I mean, we, we have, exactly we have places like CERN, you know, doing the particle accelerator accelerator stuff and colliding things and and trying to find you know the God particle and supposedly opening up you know uh, portals and things coming through and it's and that that's just that's CERN mainstream quote unquote mainstream science yeah. with you know Shiva on their front lawn so you make that for what it is but <laughs> but, but but then you you have like the the more esoteric stuff that has been going on for centuries like like. Uh, um, schools of mystery. I mean, the, these are the, there are there are really schools out there that people go to to learn how to pursue the the, the arts, the dark arts, and and opening portals and, and and allowing beings and things coming through. And then what are those things? You know, and there's just so much that I think that we're we're waking up to. No matter where you're coming fr- from in life, as far as how you believe the world operates, I feel like collectively we are all together in this sense of waking up to the idea that this reality that we live in is far more complex than what we thought it was. Absolutely. And, yeah. and we're now looking at the movies that came out over the last few decades. And we're like, Holy crap. Is the matrix real? You know, <laughs> <laughs> so you know, but it, it's with that said though, it, I feel like it's an exciting time to be alive because absolutely, uh, it, it, every day you wake up to something else, that's just like what the heck. Whether it's it's mind blowing on a paranormal angle or uh, confirming to the idea that you know there are certain elite type people in this world that are favored over you and and you're just a peon to them kind of thing. Like just today, I I, I read an article and I'm, I'm hijacking the show, but just I'll, I'll, we'll get back to you in a second, Ryan. Uh, <laughs> to, just today though, I, I I read an article that uh, it just came out I think yesterday, and we're recording right now on December third, um, 2021. And uh, we were, uh, I'm reading this article and it's talking about how the CIA, now BuzzFeed got these, this information through the Freedom of Information Act. It took them uh, like a decade to get all this information, but it turns out that the CIA in the last, uh, I think it said 14 years, has had 10 people within the CIA caught having uh, uh, inappropriate actions with children. Uh, and any stemming from anything from finding it on their computers to actually physically doing things with kids down to two years old. Mm-hmm. And they, uh, they pass it on to the, the, uh, I forget what, what, uh, department it was, you know, basically doing their, 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 the right thing to do. You pass it on down the chain for, you know, legal pr- prosecution, prosecution and stuff of the 10 of the 10 people though, only one was actually prosecuted. The other nine were, was given back to the CIA and the CIA most likely just dispatched them and, and fired them kind of thing. But that no, no legal prosecution came out of it. And it was because they say it was to, um, to protect the sense of information that these people knew. So they basically put these people and what they knew over the innocence of children that were being abused. Mm-hmm. And so like, it, that's just an example of, of people waking up to understanding that uh, we, we, we lived very long time in the past few centuries, uh, not a few centuries, but let's just say the last hundred years. Uh, at least in America, where you're like, you know, th- these are the rules, these are the laws, and w- it all runs smoothly. It's great, it's amazing, and all of a sudden we're re- realizing we're waking up that no, there, there's actually multiple systems here, and if you're not in a certain system, you don't get away with things that other people. Not that you should get away with those kind of things, but I'm saying like, you know, it, th- these people they don't they don't uh, have the same set of rules that uh, everybody else does, and that's just one that's just one example. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Anyways. Well- what what are the sort of conclusions that I've drawn there is that there is I, I mentioned earlier about 
the planet and 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 how the, the people on the planet are what animates into consciousness. Now, I I believe that there are like um, a native. Um, um, uh, there, there are some native people who have been with this planet for a very long time. And there are also a lot of people that have been introduced to this planet without any conscious awareness of what their agenda is, but they have been placed here with the specific agenda of suppressing the energy of both the planet and the human race. And they are just naturally inclined to do very debaucherous, evil acts, uh, including to children, and um, and it's all about the suppression of humanity. Um, but actually, really, if we want to turn that on its head, we can look at it another way and say, actually, these people are here serving us because they are providing a very unique set of circumstances that I don't believe exists anywhere else in the universe that are presenting us with these challenges um, that we're going through. And it's all about growth. It's all about discovering more about who we are, finding, discovering ourselves and growing and ultimately I do believe we are moving in the direction where it's pretty obvious humanity is waking up. And the more the authorities and this debaucherous energy clamps down on the human race, and we're seeing mandates and laws being imposed on humanity now that we would never have imagined uh, go back 10, 20 years ago, we could not imagine the set of circumstances that we're in now. And um, if I can sort of give you an example of how, I mean, I, I've, I've had a very difficult, a very challenging life. I've, I've, I've suffered a lot throughout this life and I'm not, I don't want to make this about me and how you know special I am, blah blah blah. It's not about that. Um, I, I, I want to give people an idea, using myself as an example of of how they can see their own personal challenges. Because there's a lot of us out there that are having a difficult time on this planet, just just getting by. And a lot of us, like I said earlier, I resented my existence here for a very long time. And that's a very dangerous thing to do, by the way, because we do create, we are, we have a creative energy. If, we're, if we are an integral part of this planet, we have a creative energy within us that is being manipulated. And they're using our, because those, the people that I said uh, that are here imposing themselves on this planet that aren't aware of the agenda they're here for, they're just naturally drawn to these evil acts. Um, I'm, I'm keep losing myself now. I was going with that. You said, well, you, you, you said that you didn't want to make it about yourself. And that's right. Yeah. Um, I was talking about some of the challenges that we faced and the difficulties that I faced. And I can say quite honestly that the, my darkest, some of my darkest moments in this world have also been some of the most enlightening. It's, it's the yin and yang. You've got the darkness, but inside the midst of the darkness, you've got that portal to the light. And, and also the opposite of that is true. You can, you can be on cloud nine and something will come along, wash you off your feet and you straight plunge down into the darkness. Um, but I mean, I've always, I can remember being a young child and I had a strong sense of who I was as an individual, as a young child. But as we progress through life, our belief systems and just, just life in general, it, it has a way of removing us from who we think not from who we are and we start to become someone that we think we are and our belief systems shape our reality and they they shape our experience of of, of life our belief systems are very very powerful um and 
I sort of went through life and I, I, I lost my mum when I was 21, I think I was, and I'm 43 now, so it's quite a few years ago, but it was still quite a young age to lose my mother. And at that time, I found it very difficult because I was, I was holding back from going down certain avenues of life, certain dark paths, because one of the main motivations was I always wanted to make my mum proud. But not only that, I wanted to be healthy and live a long life. So I kind of, you know, a lot of my friends went down the path of doing drugs, this, that, and the other. I sort of withheld from all that. I had very strong opinions about all that kind of stuff. And I never went down that road. But then when my mum died, that kind of questioned everything. And I, thought, I was like, well, if I've only got a limited time here, so what? why not let your hair down and go and enjoy life? And, you know, I, I did fall off the rails for a while. And I became somebody that I wasn't. Um, I, I developed this personality interface of being, I was sort of, uh, I was a bodybuilder. I was a big guy. And I'm not going to be ashamed to admit it. I took steroids, I'm, you know. Um, and with that came this overinflated version of who I thought I was. And I was working the doors. And, um, yeah, I, I, I veered away from my true nature quite, quite, quite a long way. And my greater being went, uh-uh, you need to come back. You need to be brought back into line, mate, and you need, to, you need a bit of a reality check. And I got a big reality check. Um, 11 years ago now, 10, 11 years I had kidney failure. And so, I, I, you know, my lifestyle choices, they weren't the cause of my kidney failure, but they certainly didn't help. <laughs> you know? um, and so I've gone from being this big, strong man about the town with a reputation, you know, on this geezer and, and then all of a sudden, I'm on a hospital bed. Um, sort of, I lost my business. I was that's another thing. I was a business owner as well, and, um, you know, trying to to be somebody in this world. And whilst I was trying to be this imaginary version of myself, I completely lost myself in the process. And from from that to being on this. Hospital bed, I lost my business. I'd lost, I'd lost my health. I'd lost my wealth. I'd lost a lot of friends in the process. And I'd, I'd lost everything. I was, my, you know, I'd lost all my income. My house was in the process of being repossessed. It never did get repossessed, thankfully, but it, it was looking that way at one point. I lost my mobile phone. My internet got disconnected. I lost everything at that point. And that provided me with a very unique set of circumstances that really made me question about who I was as a person. I kind of rediscovered myself again. And um, aside from anything else, just unplugging from the matrix, just taking, and it wasn't, like I said, it wasn't by choice. These things were removed from me. I'd, I'd Got in that I'd got into the habit of being addicted to a mobile phone. I mean, the iPhones were around, you know, 10, 11 years ago. I'd got an iPhone and, uh, you know, um, spending a lot of time on the internet. And then all of a sudden, I had nothing. And I'd never, you know, and I disconnected from everybody as well. And, and, a lot, and I'd also found this new, um, I wanted to try and give myself the best opportunity and health possible. So I changed my diet drastically. I got the motivation to cut out all the rubbish and started eating very healthily. And my, my perspective of the world just absolutely transformed overnight. 
So there I was in the midst of this worst possible set of circumstances I could find myself in. And all of a sudden I found this inner energy that, that was coming to the forefront that carried me through this bad, this, these dark times. And, and it, and it just, it really gave me a whole new perspective on life. Um, I, I find myself not really being able to connect with people around me because I was living a completely different life. I, was, I wasn't sat on the phone. I wasn't sat in front of my computer. I was out in nature um, contemplating life, which is not something anyone else was doing. So, And I find myself sort of in this very unique position um, with his very unique perspective on life. And um, you could almost call it, 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 was, it was a double-edged sword. It was the breaking of me, but also the making of me. Um, now, 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 since then, um, obviously, we're functioning in, in this world and I, we need other people around us. I've, I learned that it was a very lonely existence. Um, having this unique perspective, I couldn't really connect with my peers around me. I was, I was in a very different vibration. I found other people quite heavy and, uh, and I was, I was buzzing. I was in this really vibrant place because I've just got this new breath of fresh air about life. And, <clears throat> slowly but surely the reality of life crept back in you know I, I then found myself hang on a minute you now need to to survive financially you need to put bread and water on the table you need to you know you need a hand in the world of technology you need a we need mobile phones they're an essential tool, tool this day and age I, you know I, I I don't see how we can survive without them now. Um, so bit by bit, I sort of plunged myself back into the matrix, as it were. And um, and I find myself, you know, sort of in the thick of it with everybody else again, which is which is uh, which is where I find myself now. Um, but just to to recap on what I'm trying to say is. Some of these, some of these um, major challenges that we face when we're put under pressure, and we need to recognise that, you know, that's exactly how diamonds are produced. It's some it, it, it's pressure and heat, and, and you know, for thousands of years, create this beautiful diamond. And the, and the more pressure that we're put under both as individuals and as a human race and, and we are putting being put under an immense amount of pressure at the moment as a race as a as a species um the more pressure that we're put under the more our opportunity to shine and i think that's an important thing for people to understand that um sometimes these these dark times really are an opportunity to grow and really are an opportunity to discover ourselves. And I think, I personally really do believe that we have got some very tough times ahead, just around the corner, um, very close. I agree. I agree. Uh, I just discovered the term black pill. I don't know if you've ever heard of that. No, that's uh, new for me, that. You've heard of red pill, right? Yep, the okay, red and blue so, pill. So uh, essentially, and apparently there's a white pill now too. I don't know what that is, but... Uh, yeah, these kids making up stuff every day. Uh, but apparently the black pill is you're red pilled, but because you're red pill, you view the w the world as there's no hope. We're all doomed. Apparently I'm more black pilled than anything. So uh, I, I do agree with you though. I mean, th th I think there are really challenging times ahead for humanity. Mm -hmm. 
without going into uh, specifics and all that stuff, it just in general, I think uh, we're living in a very challenging time because we're living in a time where humanity is transitioning uh, yes. and technology, like you were just talking about, is a big part of that transition. Uh, mm-hmm. We didn't, we, a lot of the problems that we have today stem from us having supercomputers in our pockets and constantly being connected to the, whatever you want to call it, the matrix. Uh, yeah. And so we're transitioning that we're learning how to communicate in new ways as human beings that we never had the opportunity to do before now. And, uh, it's presenting challenges. And, um, and, and I think that, uh, what you were talking about with the whole, um, the analogy of diamonds and stuff, I think we're putting the pressure cooker right now. And yes. I think that there are going to be people who are going to rise out of this and they're going to be stronger, uh, more influential than they ever could have imagined. And there, I think will be some people who do cave to the pressure and unfortunately um, things like suicide and thing, I think that's going to arise because, and that's why, that's why, and this is not a commercial plug. This is why when I have the opportunity to talk about companies like Cerebral and stuff, I take it because I, I do think that there are a lot of people out there that listen to my show that deal with depression and the way the world is right now. Uh, I think we all have a certain amount of anxiety and depression that we were dealing with. Absolutely. And, and I, I talked about it earlier this year, how I was, on, on New Year, on Christmas Eve, I was supposed to be doing an interview with a guy who wound up committing suicide. And, oh, wow. and so, I mean, it, it kind of, I, I, I'm just, as the host of the show, I'm just, anybody who's listening right now, I understand life sucks right now and, and it's hard for some people, but try to try to find some kind of light in your life that keeps you from doing things that maybe in the dark hours of your life you're considering doing. Um, and I, and I, and I'm not oblivious to it. I know that there's a lot of people out there struggling right now with those kind of thoughts because we're living in a world where you feel like there's no hope. There's, there, there's hope. If you, if you create that hope in your own life, don't let the outside influences dictate your own personal, uh, experience in this plane of existence. Uh, mm-hmm. make, make that your responsibility to take on and, and, and shut out some of the stuff that's going on in the world. And, and if you have to create a bubble around yourself where certain things just don't exist in your head, you know, <laughs> like, yeah. uh, that's, that's, that's what I've done to stay sane with some things. I just, I pretend things don't happen. Like certain things, they don't exist in my house. It's just like COVID what? I, I don't know what you're talking about. Okay. <laughs> yeah, too right. They're like, too did right. you hear about the variant? What's a variant? I don't know what a variant <laughs> is. I, it, this it, like, it doesn't exist in my world. Okay. It's just, <laughs> you know, so. The fear factor out there amongst the population is immense. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't sanitize. I don't hand sanitizer. It's, it, it says on the bottle that it kills all right bacteria, but it, it kills, you know, you expose yourself to enough of it. It's going to have a detrimental effect on your health. Yeah. I don't sanitize. I don't wash my hands every five minutes. I don't wear a mask when I'm out in public. I have got health conditions and I'm still here to tell the tales. <laughs> but you look out there at people. I mean, I get some, just today walking around the supermarket, some, you know, a couple making some, unpleasant comments about me because I've not got a bad scum, but if you want to live in fear, that's your choice. You know, it is a choice at the end of the day. You don't have to make that choice. Yeah. It, um, I, I think uh, we, we live in a world right now where just in general, people are um, living under the influence of other people. And so yeah. uh, whether, whether it, that, that stuff aside, just like I've said over the years, disconnect people just disconnect i said this when i first started the show back in 2017 i started telling people to disconnect from mainstream propaganda and that they need to just uh find out what they think about the world unplug and uh you know if you started doing that back in 2017 you're probably thanking me right now like <laughs> i mean like like i'm a happy well i'm, I'm happy when i'm talking to people like you but i, I can be kind of a a pain in the ass to deal with sometimes as well. Oh, yeah. so, All of this company. Yeah, yeah. definitely. You know, yeah. You, you, the audience gets to hear me on, on, on the good side. You know, I, I get to interview somebody, I have a fun, pleasant conversation and this is all great and stuff. But when the microphone goes off and, and then somebody pisses me off all of a sudden, I'm a totally, I'm a totally different person. Like, I thought you were a Christian. I am a Christian. I'm just mad. I'm a mad Christian. I'm an angry Christian. You know, so. I got road rage the other day and it just, it just 
proves that I've still got those demons inside of me. You know, I'm still, I still get angry when I need to. Yeah. I, <laughs> I, I wish I could, I could just have like a, a room dedicated to putting holes in the wall. That'd be great. You know? Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. Let's, let's, uh, let's backtrack here. We, we, uh, I want to talk to you about these experiences still, because I don't think you mm-hmm. really went into, uh, let's talk about the implant well, or, or wherever, implant, you, want okay, yeah. wherever, wherever uh, you want to go. The, the implant again, I mean, this, uh, the implant was there for, from, it wasn't there as a child. And I, and I suspect it, it sort of appeared roughly around the time of that, of the abduction that I was, you know, given the significant clues, um, and I and I, I do think I was given significant clues for for a reason in order to put me on on the path that I'm on. Um, so I, I think it sort of stems back to that time. I can't be a hundred percent sure, but it basically in my left hand just there. There's it's about the size of a a large pill, you know, a, a sort of capsule pill that you'd sort of take. It sort of, it feels like that under the skin uh, in my left hand. Uh, now, it was only, it was when I was questioning life um, and I had a series of events and a lot of information was, was, was came to me all at once. It was, it was what you might want to term like an awakening experience. Uh, you know, the right, a lot of synchronicities happened and a lot of information came into my life at that time. And it just gave me this big picture of, uh, you know, my own personal circumstances and, and, and I've got an idea of what we're going through as a planet together, as a, as a race, as a human race. And um, the, the, the thing about, this implant is, oh, I don't know for sure that it's an implant. I have very strong suspicions that it is. Um, I know other people that are not conspiratorial minded, that are friends that I've grown up with, that have exactly the same lump in one guy. I know he's got it in his arm there. Um, there are, you know, what I'm trying to say is this sort of thing is far more common than we like to realise. I was lucky. I was given the clues. I was given some, you know, some breadcrumbs to to follow. Uh, a lot of people don't have that that fortunate uh, perspective uh, point of reference. Um. So again, I can't. I, I mean, I was looking at. And when I first discovered it, I was like, I need to get this removed. I've got to get this out of me. You know, what's it doing? And what, what sort of, how is it operating? How is it affecting me? Is it the cause? It Could it be the root cause of my autoimmune conditions? You know, this, that, I had all these kind of thoughts going through my head. I decided in the end not to get it removed. Uh, it would have been uh, a painful procedure. And, and also on top of that, some of my research that I did online of other people, that have had these implants removed. Uh, one guy said, "Yeah, I went, you know, went through the expense of having it removed privately, and um, it was in a lot of pain. It was a painful process because apparently there's a lot of nerve fibers and things attached to into these. They're embedded into into us quite deeply. And he said he was in a lot of pain after he had it removed. And then a couple of days later, they just picked him up and put another one straight back in." So it was a kind of a bit of a pointless yeah. process. I, I have heard of that. I have heard of yeah. that. And so it's like, shoot, man, I, I'm out 10 grand and <laughs> I got this thing right back in. I can understand that. Did you talk to your niece about it at all? I mean, have you ever thought about talking to her because of her saying that she saw you? No, uh, not really. Um, no, I, I, again, my my views, my worldly views are not something that I force on people in my day-to-day living. She's a young child. She's got a, a lot to learn about life herself. And, and and if you're not careful, I can present this in a way that could be very scareful, scary to a young child. So I'm very careful with my approach, especially, you know, with children. 
Um, but I, I must say that um, the paranormal activity in my life, I had a, it's, it's, it's always been there, but it's, it's kind of come and gone in waves. But at the minute, I've had a lot of heightened activity again. Um, if I go back probably about 12 months ago, at the moment I am getting taunted at night. There is an entity around me and I, I don't feel like there's a demonic presence and I don't feel like there's a ghost. I feel like this is something that's attached to me. Again, I've not no evidence, but no proof. This is just from the research that I've done. There are, there are different types of paranormal activity. And again, what we think of now as being paranormal, I think in the not too distant future will become just normal. <laughs> it will be explained by some scientific process. Yeah. Um, there are different things occurring. There are different accounts. I mean, some of the things that I've seen, I think it's pretty obvious. There's someone like a, maybe a person in an invisibility cloak going around causing mayhem captured on CCTV. And you can see they'll flick that push that open that and, and it's just like they're going around a room and okay maybe there is someone you know and, and in some cases you can actually see the predator camouflage like effects you know uh like what people claim uh, they've seen with sasquatch as well when they are cloaked um is that a technology that that maybe the military have access to or, or certain members of um you know, this this dark cabal that are and, and again their their agenda is not it's not money. Money is just a tool that they use to manipulate. Their main agenda is they feed on our energy. Whether that be fear and uh darkness that you know you could be you could have an entity attached to you and you could be in an argument with a person and this entity is, is feeding you and tapped into you and, and for giving you thoughts and making you act in a certain way that's going to inflame the situation. I might even place two people together that shouldn't be together, but they know that, that those two people together will create a certain rift and a certain energy and a, a, a vortex of energy that they will feast on in the background. Um, you know, these, a lot of these entities, they're there, um, they're in the background. We can't see them. We can't necessarily sense them, but they're, they're having a hand in what's actually going on around us in our day to day lives. And they're manipulating us into certain circumstances where they can feed from our energy. And equally, I say they feed in from fear, but they can equally feed on love. I mean, You've got to look at um, what's the number one uh, mind control program that the world is suffering from. For me, my, in my opinion, that would be religion. And, and I know right off the bat I'm going to upset some people by saying this because uh, some people who have religious beliefs, their, their beliefs are very enamored and very, very solid. Um, and instantly you, you sort of bring their beliefs into question and their defences are going to be straight up. And there's going to be a lot of people that will dislike what I'm about to say. But there are millions. And it, it, it's took a bit of a backstep in recent times. But you go back throughout history for, like, for thousands of years, the human race has been on their knees projecting love and worship to this entity. And to the, to the atheists out there, you're, there's no way in this world that that amount of energy is not being harnessed. That there is an entity up there sucking all that love and all that worship and absolutely devouring it. They are loving every minute of it. In modern times, it's kind of mutated and, and transformed to suit the modern day and age. Now, people worship money, celebrity. Um, you know, and, it, and it, you look into the celebrity lifestyle and people selling their souls to the devil and you, you know, you freeze frame clips and you can see people's eyes change and expressions and they're changing, they're transforming on stage and they're becoming these entities 
and these entities are feeding on the worship of their um, audience. And it is a big, there's a big, huge amount of energy. You put someone on a pedestal on a stage with thousands of people screaming and, and you know, worshipping that person on the stage, that's a big energetic charge that somebody is just sucking up out of the audience. Um, so I've digressed and gone off on a tangent again. But <laughs> so in, th- in what, I'm, what I was saying, there's a lot of different things going on in the background uh, with these paranormal experiences. And I think as well, another thing that people experience, if they see a ghost that isn't interacting with them, they just see an apparition. Again, I think that can be bleed through from a, an, an energy that's attached to that location. And it's, it's like a flashback. If you look at the Earth as it spins around the sun and you've got the sun spinning around the galaxy and we're spiraling around the galaxy, every now and again, as the, as the um, Earth is spinning and moving, the, the, the energetic alignments on some occasions will be close to uh, alignments in the past and we might get a bit of bleed through. Um, you might see um, a, 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 a gentleman from the 18th century on a horseback going across a road where there used to be a Roman road years ago. You know, is that a ghost? Is that a, a demon? No, it's, I think that's some bleed through that's an energetic bleed through that's occurring um, through that time and space location. Um, you've got demons that are summoned through dark magic and rituals, and uh, not just demons, but I believe cryptids as well. Um, sometimes when in a particular area you might find there's uh, uh, sightings of a particular cryptid or, or a, a dogman or something, and then you also learn that in that area there's a, an active satanic group that may be opening portals for these entities to come through into this, um, into our dimensional space. Um, there's a lot of things going on that you need to consider. And with me, I feel like, I feel that that my journey in this life and and this conversation that we're having now is the reason why I've had so much attention um, in the past and and in the recent times as well. Just, Just going back about a year ago, I've, I've, I've had some real problems sleeping now for, for quite a while. Um, and, like, I remember the first time it started, I was just, I was, I was, I've was i got sleep apnea as well, and I've, I've got all sorts going on. But, again, I don't want to make this about me. But I'm, um, I'm battling trying to go to sleep. I'm just got into a state of just about to doze off and then my bedside cabinet decided to move six inches across the floor right in front of my face as I'm dozing I'm like whoa and I'm wide awake and I'm like what's going on there why did that happen that's odd you know I'm not feeling like there's a demonic entity in the house I'm not feeling the pre- a presence or anything just weird things happening um I was the worst one I was I was uh, I, I tend to sit up a lot in bed because too much time laying down, it, it makes it even harder to try and get sleep. So I sit up for a while. And then when you sit back, lay back down again, you feel a little bit refreshed. And it's like sometimes you can sort of, you know, feel a bit more comfortable and, and uh, drift off to sleep. But this one particular time, I'm sat on the edge of the bed and something rugby tackled me so hard and knocked me flying over. And I was like, whoa, it actually angered me. I was like, I, I stood up. I was like, you coward. I was like, how dare you hide in the shadows and attack me, um, it, it, you know, from from the from the darkness. Like, why, how, you coward, come out. Let me see who you are. Let me see why you're doing this to me. And I had a big bruise and a scratch across my chest after that happened. 
Um, and that was going back about 12 months ago. Um, just after that happened, actually, we decided, me and the missus decided that we were going to set a camera up in the bedroom and uh, to just try and capture some of this on, on footage. And um, uh, I woke up the next day, I thought, oh, okay, uh, I don't think anything significant happened or nothing that I was aware of anyway, but we'll check the footage anyway. One thing we did capture was, I don't know if you've ever come across in your research, whether you've ever come across a, a sky rod is. It's, it's like, um, they call them flying fish. It's like a, it's like, it's something that's only picked up on camera. You don't see it with the naked eye. It's very fast. And it was like a creature. It was like a, um, like a centipede almost, but with like, um, the waves of a, of a fish, you know, those are really hard to explain. But anyway, we captured one of those. Like on, an eel almost on, in the sky, like an eel? It's like an eel with fins, but as the, the fins are run along the length of the body and they sort of ripple, as 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 a fish would be propelled through the water, this is propelling itself through the air using these fins. Um, it's very hard to describe without giving you a visual. Uh, but sky rods, if you if you do a, an image search for a sky rod, you'll see exactly what we captured. Uh, so we captured one of those on very clearly, actually, and very vividly on one film. And the other thing I noticed is there was a lot of orb activity around us uh, in the bedroom. And um, the, the the camera, it was only a cheap thing that we got, but it was motion activated. But because I'm so restless, it just recorded all night. <laughs> so there was like a lot of footage to go through and I, I quickly got bored and wasn't that interested. So I didn't think anything happened. And then the missus went, oh, look at this. We're both laying there in bed and then we're both sort of motionless and then the covers get yanked off us. <laughs> it's like, oh, you know, we did capture something on camera. Okay, fair enough. I sent it to a few family members. Look, I told you, I weren't just saying it. You know, I've got proof now. <laughs> and... um there was another occasion when I went away for the week uh, for a weekend with the boys. Uh, it was a friend's birthday, and we've hired a boat, and we, we, we're on the Norfolk Broads, somewhere in the UK, famous for boating. And um, the missus was at home, and she set the camera up again, actually, while she was on her own. She was just curious as to whether there'd be anything happen while I wasn't there. And curiously, there was no orbs, nothing. And when I'm in there, there was a lot of orbs constantly, which was which was um, an interesting point to note. But then, as uh, we're on this boat, uh, one of the guys goes up on the roof. He's got a cigar. It's his birthday. He's going to have this celebratory cigar for his birthday. And then one by one, the other lads sort of disappear off onto the roof, and, and I, I stayed in the inside the boat. And the, the precise moment that the last lad left my vicinity and I was in the boat on my own, my bedroom, which was at the front of the boat, all of a sudden the door violently burst open. And I just took that as a message that, yeah, you, you've gone away with the lads, but I'm still with you. <laughs> I'm still, I'm, I'm, I'm attached to you. You know, you're my point of interest. That was the message I got from that. And, uh, and then there was an occasion just a few weeks ago. I'm lying in bed, and all of a sudden, I'm actually asleep at this point. I'm actually fast asleep. All of a sudden, I start sliding out the bed. And I'm, I wake up, I open my eyes, and I'm moving across the bed. I'm, like, no, I'm not being pushed. I've not got any pressure in the middle of my back. I'm just sliding on the bed, and I, I can't do anything to stop it. I slide off the bed and land on the floor. And I'm like, again, I'm I'm angry because I'm struggling to sleep anyway. And I've just been woke up by being slid off the bed and landing on the floor. And, you know, the missus wakes up with me shouting at this invisible ghost. <laughs> but, um, yeah, the, the the interesting thing is that, again, we've, we've set the camera up a couple of times. And, and I'll be honest, I really can't be doing with going through eight hours worth of footage just to see if something happens. But... It is very apparent there is a lot of orb activity captured when I'm present. We set it up in my little boy's room. Uh, 
no orbs. Set it up in our room with Sarah just there, no orbs. Uh, even there was a night she set the camera up and I didn't go to bed till a few hours later. Before I went to bed, no orbs. I went to bed, the bedroom's full of orbs. Very strange. I don't, and, I, and I think it's something that's, it's an entity that I've either got some, a karmic um, charge with, there's some some karma between us that it, that's being lived out, or or maybe it's about um, my unique experience through life and my unique perspective on life, and there may be uh, some something trying to stop me singing my song, if that makes sense. Another another unusual thing that used to happen to me going back sort of 10, 10 years or so when I was, you know, in the midst of my awakening, I I wanted to get this message out to people. And I started writing, um, I started planning and writing a talk uh, that I wanted to present in my local community. And as I was typing, uh, and I was typing on a device that I'd never connected on the internet, uh, and so in, uh, as I was typing, as I was looking at the screen, watching what I was typing, it had typed normally. As soon as I looked down at the keyboard to look for the keys to type, the cursor would jump all around the screen. And it happened every single time I took my eyes off the screen. So it was like there was something in the room with me watching exactly what I was doing and waiting for me to lock down so that the cursor could move or, uh, or, or maybe it might have been the webcam. I, I, who knows? Who knows? Who really knows? But just a lot of unusual, unexplainable activity um, right to the present day. Do you, do you still have any of the uh, footage from like your bedroom and stuff? Yes. Could, yes. could you send me some of it? I mean, I don't want to, I don't want, I don't want eight, 10 hours of footage. I'm not, no, 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 no. Like, yeah, if you, if can... you don't want to go through it, I don't want to go through it. So. <laughs> no, I've got a, I've got a short screen recording. Awesome. That I, made. I mean, it is me and the missus in bed. I don't know. I don't know how she'll feel about it, but uh, for the greater good, I think she'll be fine. Just I, don't I'm tell her. Ask her permission first. No, but, no, no, so. no, no. Don't tell her. Don't tell her. <laughs> 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 but yeah i mean if, if she's okay with it and stuff I, I would like to see it at least and yeah, if, if it's course. shareable i'd like to share it too but if she yeah, doesn't want to share that's fine but i mean like if you got footage of the the blankets being pulled orbs or whatever else you have and stuff i mean i i, I definitely would like to see that for sure yeah, yeah. um it sounds like it's you know i can make a movie paranormal activity part 10 with it you know I don't, I don't know how many videos or movies there are out there that call paranormal activity but it seems like there's a lot every other year they're coming out with one so uh, I've, I've never seen any of them so uh the people people are like why don't you ever watch it because if i watch scary movies i may not want to do my own show so it, i just i refrain from watching horror movies and anything remotely scary because i know that stuff's real and i don't want to be scared to talk to people who've gone through those kind of things yeah and, it's, and to be fair, since since I've been listening to your show and, and I, I've, I've been listening to Wes's uh, Chronicles, Sasquatch Chronicles, um, me, I've got another friend, uh, Stu, um, who's who listens to the show as well. He's a big fan, and um, we both decided that there's this uh, there's a hot spot in the UK that's known for cryptid activity or or UFO and, and alien activity, and it's, it's less than an hour's drive from us. So, and he's got a camper van. So we, we had this great idea of, um, of, go, of spending the night in these woods uh, called um, oh, uh, Canuck Chase. Sorry, nearly escaped me there, Canuck Chase. And before we went, I did a podcast search, not by podcast name, but by the podcast description of, of the show, the show title. Um, so people that have talked about things, then their experiences in that area. And I was really taken back by the massive amount of accounts that people have had in that area. So we were like quite charged to go and spend the night there and see what kind of experiences we could have. And we did have a, a, an unusual 
experience. Again, nothing concrete and conclusive. He did capture an image, an apparition of something in the woods. And it was, it, oddly enough, it was early on in the evening that we had activity. Later on, sort of when you'd expect to get it around two, three in the morning, it was calm. There was nothing. It wasn't even eerie. But when we went out at about 10 in the evening, there was an unusual charge of energy in the air. It felt odd. It felt eerie. And we went walking down this path uh, through these woods. And um, at the point where we got this photo of this apparition of like a mist, uh, we didn't see it at the time, obviously, but um, it, it was the same location where we had the, this experience. We, we were just... We'd, we'd found something hanging in the tree. So, we just, you know, we took a photo and then we just turned around to start walking forwards again. And we heard, like, um, it wasn't a growl. It wasn't an aggressive growl, but it was something big letting us know that it was there. It was, I can't reproduce the noise and I can't really describe it, but it was, it was something big. You, we knew it wasn't, this wasn't a fox or a badger. It, this was big. It was a deep like, grumble. We both stopped dead in our tracks, looked at each other like, what? Did, did you hear that? Yeah. And then something moved forward through the bush, something big. <laughs> my instinct, I've got this big bright light on my, and they said, so my instinct was, I'm, sort of giving us away with this big beak on it. So I turned the light off. My mate stood up, what are you doing? <laughs> He's sort of like, you know, got really uh, quite worried. He, well, I, I honest, honestly, I felt very vulnerable being not deep in the woods, but we were quite away. My mobility is not the best anyway. I said to Stu, if anything happens, I'm not running. I can't run. <laughs> we're in trouble. You're the, so, you're the kind of person that I want to go out with because I'll just trip you and run. <laughs> Yeah, bait. <laughs> you're not safe with me. You, you're, probably better, you're probably better off with Bigfoot because I'll, I'll feed you to Bigfoot. <laughs> <laughs> well, we did. We all footed it to the van. And then when we got back to the van, we were stood outside trying to, like, compose ourselves a little bit. Like, well, you know, that was that was pretty, you know, something definitely big in those woods. And then it's something kind of alerted us to the, the fact that it had followed it back because there was a clang. From coming from in the forest, it was like okay, something's there, definitely there. But but then when we went out later on, I could say there was it was a completely different vibe. It wasn't as dark, it wasn't oppressive, it wasn't as eerie. And we were seeing eyes in the distance, and it was like, it wasn't like oh, you know, it's oh yeah, oh no, it's a fox, you know, it's you know. So we weren't over and above me excited about seeing something we were quite calm but yeah it was it was, it was an experience you gotta you sometimes you gotta put yourself in these yes you know positions to to to, to get to have these experiences that's that's the way i feel too i mean when I, when people are like why why are you going out there and do it because somebody's gotta do it somebody's gotta <laughs> do it why not me why not me? I, I I'm the one that hasn't really had much of an experience so let's uh let's change that you know so that's the way I look at it Oh, but um yeah man listen i i think that this was fun talking to you about this stuff uh as far as the implant goes and the whole abduction stuff have you have you thought about doing regression at all to i have see? twice actually yeah and you've, you've done it twice i have yeah i've, I've had regression twice and and I've, I've, exactly the same thing came up both times i just had this feeling that i was again i was uh, my eyes were closed and it was like, it was a bit like being on the operating table and you know, you're being, you know, you're being having work done on you, but you're not able to move or interact. And I just had this unusual feeling that, you know, I, I was calm. I wasn't scared. I wasn't fearful, but I knew I was being worked on. It was, and that, and it, and it came up both times, exactly the same um, during regression. What came of it, though? Did you have any memories that that uh, that you didn't have? Before? No, no visual um, memories, nothing. Um, 
in all honesty, I don't think I was conscious during the ab abduction. Um, they, this is the feeling that I'm getting. This is the, what I'm sensing during the regression. I don't feel I was conscious. I was, it was like I was anaesthetized. I wasn't able to move. I wasn't able to talk. I wasn't able to do anything. I was just completely motionless and I had a feeling like there was several entities there sort of fiddling around and interfering with my physiology. Yeah, that's what came from the regression. That's interesting. Yeah, I, and I guess that, that makes sense too. I mean, you know, if you're not conscious during an abduction, uh, you, there's not much to remember. And no, so exactly. It, That's it, true. It, like, um, how many times we we hear about that kind of aspect where people are, you know, they're they're in bed sleeping and and, and things happen and, and and it's like their body something takes over their body instantaneously. So uh, at that point, you're at the mercy of whatever is doing this, um, mm. man. Well. Hopefully, uh, you're, you you put your abduction days behind you, and uh, you can just live normal life with things pulling your covers off the bed. You know, <laughs> <laughs> it, it's uh, it, it's one of those things, man. Where I, like I said before, I, I think the world is far stranger than people can even imagine, it, more than I can imagine. Absolutely. And uh, yeah. and uh, it, it's it, we, we uncover things on this show just by hearing people's experiences. I appreciate you coming on and sharing. Mate, it's been brilliant. I really enjoyed talking to you, and I really appreciate the opportunity. And then, um, well done, by the way, on 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 this whole platform you created. It's it's, uh, and then thank you so much for giving me a place on that platform. Well, that's the show, everybody. I really hope you enjoyed it. And if you did enjoy it, please share the show with your friends. I don't care where or how you share the show. Just share the show if you enjoyed it, because that's the best thing you can do to help the show grow. Share the show. Leave some happy rating and reviews if you feel like it on your podcast player of choice. But of course, until next week, friends, stay safe, take care, and remember, the truth will set you free, but first, it'll piss you off. Bye. Bye.